as much as I truly believe that Real Madrid, as we speak, are doing a good job and are right behind their opponents in the league in the second position. Girona above them, by the way. Shout out, Girona. You guys are incredible. But let's talk more about Real Madrid because this team right now is building the next generation, the next Galacticos, right? The likes of Jude Bellingham, with Vinicius Jr., Valverde being a part of that team, Kamavinga, Chuameni. They are doing such an incredible job at building for the future right now. And it's very impressive. Every team out there is looking at Real Madrid and understanding that they are here to dominate in Champions League football once again. But this Real Madrid side, the current one, is impressive. Don't get me wrong. It's a strong team. But in my opinion, back then in the years of 2004, the likes of R9 Ronaldo, Raul, Zidane, Beckham, Figo, all these players playing in one team was just mind-blowing. So today, I will take over Real Madrid, but I will try to recreate a Galacticos of the past by going ahead and bringing in players are from the same country, same position, and trying to recreate what they had back in the day and create a new Galacticos. Let's see how this goes. So right now, as we speak, Real Madrid surprisingly is relying on Jose Lu as their striker. The rumors about the likes of Haaland, Mbappe and all these guys will never stop until they bring someone in for that spot. I'm hoping for Santi Jimenez. But then you have the likes of Vini Jr. on the left wing, Rodrigo on the right wing, Valverde, Chuameni, Bellingham, the future of that midfield, along with Camavinga, possibly left back, possibly midfielder, he could play anywhere. And then in the center back position, you have two uh, players who are very experienced, and then Carvajal at right back and Kepa in goal. But I want to bring in a different type of team. Now here, you can see the picture. Ronaldo, Raul, Igo, Makelele, Zidane, Beckham, Roberto Carlos, Pavon, Elguera, Salgado, and Casillas. Those are the players that I'm going to build this team on. So anyone that doesn't fit has to go. Every single player has to be of the same nation, the same position, and also has to have the... Uh, actually, that's all it is, really. Same nation, same position. Simple, isn't it? But... Hopefully some big names if we can bring them in and they match up together. So going through the setup of back then, you had Makelele at CDM. Chouameni is a French CDM. He would allow the likes of Zidane, which could possibly be Bellingham, but obviously he ain't French. So we're going to look for someone else there. That could be the setup for this team. So who's going to be my Spanish goalkeeper, the Casillas of this team? Surely not Kepa. It is going to be this man. That man walking in is Unai Simon. Of course, it makes sense. The Spanish national team goalkeeper who currently is kind of competing with Raya for the spot, but he is the one that I'm bringing in for this team. I'm very excited to start this rebuild by bringing in Casillas' regen. For me personally, Casillas back then was just insane. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. So many people might be too young to remember, but man, Casillas was ridiculous for so many years. And now Unai Simon is going to be our next Casilla. So Kepa, I'm sorry. Courtois, I'm sorry. You're gone. It is time for the next Casillas, which is Unai Simon. Oh, and hold up. One thing I want to mention right here is I would be so thankful to you guys if you could go ahead and drop me a follow on Instagram. And here's the reason why. As you guys might know, I've been working out every single day for like over 780 days, possibly 800 days now. Over the past one and a half weeks, I've been sick. But if you go to my Instagram account right now, Johnny Sports, you can see that I've been quite active on there. I have employed my wife to work with me now as well. And she's creating content for it, editing it and recording it while we are there, at the gym and everything. So I would really appreciate it if you guys could go on there and get active on my Instagram because I'm going to be very active on there. And I love chatting to people about working out, about health stuff and lifestyle and everything. So if you guys were looking to get in contact with me on a more personal level, that's the place to be. It is Johnny Sports on Instagram, or you can see the link in the description to drop us a follow. We're currently at 12,100 followers. Let's take that up right now. On to the center backs. This is the first one. Both of them have to be Spanish because it was Pavon and Helguera back in the day defending for the likes of Zidane, Ronaldo, Raul, Beckham, Figo to go ahead and do their thing. So we're going in for a Spanish center back. It is going to be Pau Torres. 
It just makes the most sense. Eder Militao, I'm sorry. You're gone, my friend. Paul Torres walks straight in into that left center back position for us, becoming the pavon of this team. Good thing he's left footed as well. And obviously, Paul Torres has been quite a good defender in terms of FIFA for quite some time. So he should be a good one for us. And he's also still like only 26. And obviously, one of the main goals that I want to achieve with this team is to win a Champions League. Because back in the day, that team with those big names they didn't manage to win it the last time Real Madrid had won the Champions League back then was like in the 2001-2002 season and then the next time was actually 2013 and 14 which sounds insane to me but obviously we are gonna try and win that one right now and make sure that this Galacticos team does get it done and this is Helguera's replacement yes the next Helguera so to say it is Daniel Vivian one of the only high potential, or I should say higher potential, uh, Spanish centre-backs in a game. There aren't actually that many. Paul Torres is like the highest up there in terms of the rating that he can get to. But then you have a bunch of the older players already, like the likes of Laport and such. So I wanted to go for one of the younger ones here. Daniel Vivian walks into this Real Madrid side as the new right center back so who's going to be the salgado of this team the spanish right back is walking in it's the easiest choice i needed to make right here it is of course arnaud martinez the girona right back who is one of the highest potential right backs in fc24 generally speaking had to pay 77 million for this one obviously too much money for him but in the future he's going to be worth every single penny walks into the club with an 80 rating by the way I had to pay 77 million because otherwise I couldn't get him. It was release clause or nothing. So Arnold Martinez comes in right now as my right back. Pretty happy about that. And I was just thinking, for the David Beckham position, should I just turn Jude Bellingham into a right mate? But then again, there are a couple of players that I can think of instantly. I think of like today's David Beckham. There are one or two that just make so much sense. Let me know in the comments down below which ones of the players that I mentioned that used to play at Real Madrid back in 2003 are your favorite. Because for me personally, as much as I loved R9 Ronaldo, Roberto Carlos was the one. And right now, we are bringing in our Roberto Carlos regen, so to say. There aren't many left backs when it comes to Brazil, but Caio Henrique is a beast. I... I had the option of going for Renan Lodi, but he's a former Atletico Madrid player, so for some reason I didn't want to go for it. Caio Henrique walks in now. Kamavinga, I'm sorry. I'm going to replace you right here. But I do have good news for one of the players, Chouameni. Because Makelele used to be the defensive midfielder. Chouameni is French. He's a defensive midfielder. He might be the only one that survives in this team, so... You are staying, buddy, as my Makelele. What is it on position? I was looking for someone who was kind of bald, but I couldn't find anyone. But I think this one is perfect. Because Zidane was skillful. He was elegant on the ball. He was someone who could dribble past anyone. And Ryan Cherki is that guy. Yes, Ryan Cherki in the past season has showcased his incredible abilities on the ball. I know, the all sucks right now. But Cherki is the one for me to be my Zidane in this team. And you can tell... Some of these players are lower rated. I could have also gone for the likes of Nkunku, but no, Cherki is my guy. If I'm not mistaken, Zidane has roots in Algeria, and I think Cherki is the same. I could be completely wrong here. Look, I don't think I'll be able to find the exact Luis Figo replica, but when it comes to Portuguese wingers, Rafa Leao is the one. He is the one. I mean, he just is that guy, and I'm actually impressed. But he stayed at AC Milan. I'm very impressed that he remained over there. But now he's becoming a part of the new Galacticos Rafa Leal. Left wing Vinny Jr. Goodbye. I'm sorry. He apparently picked up a long-term injury as well now. Possibly out for like two months. It sucks. But uh, Rafa Leal, left mid or left wing, I should say. He comes in now and he is one of the higher rated ones. It should be good because we have been pretty much downgrading in most positions, it feels like. Of course, it had to be James Madison. The next David Beckham. Now, I had James Madison or Jack Grealish on my mind, but Madison just makes the most sense because he's incredible at set pieces. I know he's a center attacking midfielder, but I also just watched a video in which he actually says that David Beckham is one of his idols. This will make so much sense for us. So, James Madison... You might be injured in real life, but you are going to become my right midfielder, buddy. 
We're going to turn you to a right midfielder immediately. And then you can whip those balls in. And he's obviously a dead ball specialist. Just like David Beckham. Look, you cannot replace Ronaldo. R9 Ronaldo with anyone. But the one that makes the most sense is Gabriel Jesus. Now, we had other options. Like Evan Nilsson. Like Arthur Cabral. Or Richarlison. No. <laughs> or the likes of Joao Pedro. Who I would have liked to bring in. But... He's too low rated. Gabriel Jesus just makes the most sense right now. And I do believe in the past year, a lot of people have been putting a lot of disrespect on his name. I, I genuinely feel so. Uh, Gabriel Jesus is a great striker. And I really like what he, he can bring to a team. So, yeah, disrespect needs to stop. He comes in as our R9 regen, basically. And he, he's going to be great. I know it. He's only 26 years old. He's going to smash it in La Liga and take us to that Champions League trophy. Now, to bring in Raul. Oselu, sorry, buddy. You are not Raul. And in walks the striker, the Raul of the future. Guys, this is Hugo Duro. I was looking for Spanish strikers that are actually doing well. And uh, specifically, I was just looking at Spanish strikers, and none of them are actually doing well. Abel Ruiz is currently doing terrible at Braga. Fran Navarro, I believe, is just sat on the bench at Porto. Hugo Duro, though is actually doing bits at Valencia. He's one of their top scorers in terms of goal contributions. And now he is going to be the main man for us. He might be very low rated, actually. I really hope he's not terribly low rated. Is he like above 70? Please. Okay, 74. That works for me. Hugo Duro comes in left footed. So let's put him onto that left hand side. He's 23 years old, Spanish striker. And now our team is ready. That, my friends, is R9. That is Raul. That's Zidane, Ego, Beckham, and Makelele. And then Roberto Carlos. Then we have the likes of Pabon and Helguera. And then Sol Salgado in the right back position. That is Asias in goal. From this point on, we're going to have some fun. Also, just to let you know, I've let go of any player that could put any other one in the starting 11 in danger of not playing. That has been something I've dealt with. So the likes of Bellingham, Modric, Kroos, all these guys are gone. And on top of it, I will make a point in bringing in backup players for the lads on the bench as well that were in the team back in the day as well. The likes of Solari, the likes of Campiasso, the big names that we need to bring in as well later on. But let's get through the first season. Well, the season has just ended. And let me show you something. Manchester City beat us 7-2 on aggregate. I don't even know how we got into the round of 16. That is impressive by itself. Because if you look at the starting 11, you'll realize that it definitely shouldn't be up there now. Rafael, respect. 91 rated amazing he is the leader of this squad right now he is the figo of this team jerky up to a 78 duro has gotten massive upgrade right there that's lovely to see gabriel jesus up to an 86 madison doing fine as a right midfielder arnal martinez and the entire defense looking somewhat strong chuameni looking extremely strong obviously and simon on an 85 but until this team can win some titles it's gonna be a long road oh no it's not we have, <laughs> we have beaten Barcelona, 88 points. We've beaten them on goal difference. Huh? I can't believe that. I honestly thought we were going to be barely Champions League spots, but we have won the league title. And here we go. Gabriel Jesus has gotten us 43 goals and 8 assists. His first season right here as part of the Galacticos. Let me tell you something. Back then, in 2003, 2004, Ronaldo had, in 48 games played, 31 goals and 13 assists. And Raul was the second best with 20 goals and 6 assists. This was for all competitions. So I'm very impressed to see what these lads have been able to pull off right here. Especially considering that Rafa Leao is so much higher rated than Gabriel Jesus. He still has 39 goal contributions, but hey. That man has gotten 43 goals. He is probably the reason why we have won the league title. Congrats, Jesus. I appreciate you. You, my friend, are not going to believe what I'm going to show you right now. Lads, this is the team. This is the squad, all right? You have an 83, an 84, an 85. Those are the ratings, the lower, lower ratings in this team. And somehow, this team has just gone ahead and gotten into the freaking Champions League final. Yes, 
It has beaten Liverpool. It has beaten Chelsea. It has beaten Fener on their road to the Champions League final. And you know what? I'm not going to dive in because Real Madrid were known for winning multiple Champions League titles back to back, right? So I'm going to give this team the chance to pull that off as well. Bayern Munich. Here it is. I'm not going to jump into it myself. This one, we're going to simulate. It's still early. I still want to give some of these players room to grow. Come on, Galacticos. Can you do it against Bayern Munich? No, on penalties, Hugo Duro. Last penalty, it went to 11 and 10. Oh, boy. Well, that sucks. <laughs> I was kind of hoping for a win. But I guess we're not going to get that. Hopefully we can bounce back next season and get into the Champions League final again. But our Galacticos, as you can see, are looking great. With Leao on a 93, Chuameni on a 91. And by the way, if you hear my voice cracking and everything in between and when I have to like cough and stuff, it's because I'm just coming off a terrible cold I've had for the past week and a half. So yeah, sorry about that. But let's move in here and take a look at the stats of our players. Duro, 30 goals and one assist. Gabriel Jesus taking a step back, a massive step back of like 20 goals, actually. And Rafa Leao pretty much repeated what he did last season. So I'm, I'm very uh, okay with that. Chuameni gets 11 assists from CDM. That's quite impressive. And in the league table, I am assuming... Ooh. We didn't qualify for Champions League football. What? <laughs> what? I mean, okay, now that is madness. I mean, that is crazy. Okay, so next season, Europa League title, win it. The season after that, Champions League, win it. That's the plan. Oh, and now we're bringing in the backups. Cambiaso, the bald CDM Argentinian. This is now his regen, so to say. Alan Varela from Boca Juniors is joining us right now. An Argentinian CDM. Camavinga is going the other way. I'm sorry, Camavinga. I feel bad about that. But Varela comes in as a great backup for our midfield, especially for Chuameni. Where the hell is he? There he is. Okay, there he is. His stats are decent. Not that good in pace and shooting, but that's not needed for a CDM. He has, whoa, a bunch of play styles. Quite impressive. So back in that 2003-2004 season, there was Santiago Solari, a, an Argentinian left midfielder who played 57 games, actually, which is like one of the most uh, games played in that squad that season. But he is coming in now, and he, by he, I mean Alan Velasco. Yes, an Argentinian left midfielder is joining us to replicate Santiago Solari. And with that, a great backup for this team. Comes in at a 79, which is going to be quite helpful. And guess what? We are in the final. Of course we are. I mean, we have a ridiculous team, but it's against PSG. Yes, the Europa League title is on the line and our team is looking great. The lowest rating is an 87 on our center back and also on our striker, Hugo Duro. Here we freaking go and as we go into this game currently england is losing against north macedonia i mean we are seeing injuries all around i have seen the injury of gavi an acl injury he picked up and it's very sad to see i feel like too many of these players that are playing domestically and also internationally are playing too many games right now something needs to happen too many long-term injuries are popping up left right and center especially in younger players well nowadays so what do you guys think about it? Do you think the schedules of players should be brought down? We should have less games and a little bit more rest for these players because I personally am all for it. Like, I don't mind if I can see my main player that I love just for once a week. I don't need to see them three times a week. It just doesn't need to happen. So let me know what you guys think about that situation. But here we go. Europa League final. You boys better win this against PSG. Yes, Ryan Cherky, 102nd minute. Lovely work from that man. And Gabriel Jesus has scored as well. Ozzy Men has scored for PSG. That is a great player for them. But, guys, we have a European title in the bag right now. We lost in the Champions League final earlier on. Now, having won the Europa League, being able to win the Champions League next season would be huge. But, I still have a game to go here. So, let's finish off the La Liga season. Take a look into which position we finished in and hope that we actually are, yes, top of the league table. Real Madrid have won the title once more, just ahead of Barcelona 
and Real Sociedad and Athletic Bilbao. But guys, let's take a look into the performances of these lads. I'm assuming Gabriel Jesus. No. It is the Raul region. Hugo Duro coming in with 31 and 1. Gabriel Jesus with 29 goal contributions. Rafa Leal with 25 and 7. He's 95 rated right now. I mean, he should be doing better. <laughs> I, honestly, he's so high rated. Madison, 11 goals, but 19 assists. He is truly becoming the David Beckham of this team. And that's all I wanted to see. So now the Champions League season, the big one coming up. In case you guys were wondering about something specific, a 95 rated player, how much does he earn on his new contract? Well, he's unhappy right now. And I have to give him over 1.1 million. Yes, this is ridiculous. I mean, what? I can't remember any other FIFA in which I have to give players like contract above, I don't even know, maybe like 500k was the max? Am I wrong here? 1.1? What the hell? Well, my friends, we got past Napoli and now Atletico Bilbao. I don't even know what they're doing up here in the Champions League quarterfinals, but oh, 6 4 in the end. Okay, that was. Closer than I uh, thought it could be after the first game. Dortmund. Dortmund, can you beat us? No. 4-1 in the semi-finals. Surely no comeback. 6-2 in the end, guys. We are now in the Champions League final. The Galacticos have returned to a place that they didn't actually manage to get to by themselves. Which is a big letdown because, you know, back when they brought in all those players... Like Ronaldo, Figo, Beckham, Zidane. They thought they would just go right through every single team. But it didn't go that way. And back then, the conversation started about like spending big money to get the best of the best players is not enough to win all the titles. And I still believe that's a thing today. I think being a team, being a unit, having a tactical play, uh, a style of play to follow, a clear plan, all those things are so important these days. But, hey, right here we are now against Barcelona in the final. The Clasico in the Champions League final. It couldn't have been better. Now, in the league itself, surely we have beaten them, right? Yes. 88 points, 9 points ahead of Atletico Madrid. Barca only in fifth, but still in the Champions League final. Pretty impressive. I actually wonder if they managed to pick up any of the players that we have let go. But Rafa Leao is now a 96-rated player earning more than 1.1 million in his wages, which is crazy because I believe it's weekly, right? Uh, but yeah, Chuameni is doing well. Madison, 92. Gabriel Jesus, 92. Unai Simon looking very... I mean, the, the entire team, the entire starting 11, apart from Cherki, is up above a 90. Duro, best performer this season, alongside Jesus and Rafa Leao, and Cherki with 13 and, <coughs> and 9, sorry. Uh, Madison this time around only with 15 goal contributions and the entire team is looking exactly like this. It's ready to play in this game, which means we have to find a solution. And I'm thinking the one that makes the most sense is to bring Madison into the cam position and bring on the likes of Velasco as the Solari of this team. And Cherki is going to get dropped down. And I guess we can put Peter into or Peter into into uh, the, oh, not into, onto the bench. I mean, putting him into it would be a tough one. Also, as some of you might have been able to tell, I kind of changed the lighting in the room. This feels a lot more moody. I like it. Let me know what you think. I feel like before this, I was kind of overexposed with light. But hey, anyways, here we go. Let's see how this plays out. I'm hoping that our team can do well and do the Galacticos proud, who were not able to uh, win the Champions League trophy. Go on. Rafa Leo. Oh. Uh oh. There's a lot of room in this El Clasico. Barcelona. Oh, what a save from Casillas. Yes, that is Casillas for me. It's not Unai Simon. Ronaldo. Oh, what a beautiful pass. Here comes Solari. Back into Raul. Oh, back all the way to Makelele. Beckham. Trying to create space. Takes the shot. Whips it in. Looking for R9 Ronaldo. And he sadly bottles it. R9 Ronaldo with the skills. Into Salgado. David Beckham. I should have passed it. R9 Ronaldo onto the crossbar. Dribbles as he usually does. Makelele into David Beckham. 
The run of Figo. Luis Figo. Come on, man. Ooh, big mistake. R9 on the control of the ball. Roberto Carlos pushing forward as he usually does. Roberto Carlos. Here he goes. He does see the run of Raul. He finds Raul. Raul. Yes. Haha. <laughs> Get in there. 1 0. 65 minutes have been played. And I am extremely impressed by the fact that I can go ahead and just replace the players' names with the actual Galacticos. I gotta be honest with you. Here we go, lads. We took our time in front of goal and just placed it. No chance for Teste again. Too powerful from too far up close. Too far up close? Is that even English? Well, the Galacticos have dominated this game in amazing fashion. And here goes Raul once more. Across to R9 into Solari. And that's the end. 90th minute. The Galacticos have returned and have now won the Champions League trophy. What a moment. And in comes one of our defenders. It was Pavon or Helguera, right? I might be wrong with the second name, but here we go, guys. The Galacticos are lifting it in the end. We built towards this for a couple of years. And I gotta say, man, the Galacticos from back in the day, they were something special. They truly were. So as we end this video, let me know in the comments down below which one of those were your favorite ones to watch back in the day. A lot of people used to watch Barcelona and Real Madrid. La Liga used to be the number one league and they were one of the main reasons for it. So for me, it was Roberto Carlos. I loved him. And then after that, probably the likes of Ronaldo and Zidane. Let me know your favorites. Thank you once again for watching. I will catch you on the next one. Take care and peace.